One last quick announcement before we get to the video. I do have my final small notebook review 2023 class coming up this Sunday. There was enough interest. I have enough students. I will hold the class. Only one class combined. Details are here. Uh, you can also watch problem 22 solution for additional discussion about this class. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and get to problem 24 of the 2023 AMC 10A. So this one's really kind of fun. It wasn't actually too bad if you could get over your fear factor. Uh, many people, again, have the false assumption that problems go in order of difficulty. It is incorrect. This is why you should not be afraid to skip something early because you might find things late that are easier to do. Examples of that would be problem 17 from this last year, which in my opinion was significantly easier than things like 11 where mistakes could be made uh, or problem nine perhaps, which was a little bit tricky uh, unless you approached it in a certain way. So let's look at this problem here. Six regular hexagonal blocks of side length one, the shaded ones are arranged inside a regular hexagonal frame. That's the outer one. Each block lies along an inside edge of the frame and is aligned with two other blocks as shown. So it's aligned here and here. Okay, so that's what they're saying. Uh, the distance from any corner of the frame to the nearest vertex of a block. So the nearest corner of, a, of the frame, that's here, to the nearest vertex that's here, that distance is three sevenths. Okay, uh, let's erase that. I'm gonna kind of zoom in a little bit here. Um, so we're gonna have three sevenths right there. And we also have that here. And you may wanna note a few others just in case. We don't know what we're doing yet, right? Uh, what is the area of the region inside the frame not occupied by the blocks? So the light, region this time instead of the shaded region. First, we might want to have a strategy of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, you're trying to find that area, then maybe we could do the large hexagon, the large hexagon minus six small hexagons. So you can just write it like that for now. The large hexagon, do we know what its side length is? We don't. So we'll have to find that at some point. The six small ones, do we know their side length? It says blocks of side length one. Immediately, we can calculate that. You should know that an equal lateral triangle's area is side length squared rad three over four. And you should know that every regular hexagon is six equal lateral triangles joined together. And as such, it will be six of these areas. Now, since the side length of our, our, our equilateral triangle is the same as the side length of the hexagon, it's one, that is your S that goes right here. So we're gonna have one squared, which is just one, rad three over four, and then you have to multiply that by six. But what six is this? Is it this six? No, it is six because within here are six equilateral triangles. So I need to take this expression and it needs to go right there into that single hexagon and then be multiplied by six. So now you're gonna have minus six times six rad three over four, okay? Uh, you can simplify that, but I'm not gonna bother yet. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is what? Well, we gotta have to figure out how we're gonna get this side length. I think I noticed, I'm just gonna start adding some information that since this is one, up until this point right here to that other edge, my distance is 10 sevenths. If I now kind of say, what is it that I need to find that side length? It would be that right there. Okay, so that's what we want to attack and the question is how. And you wanna think, well, what is going on in the general vicinity of what we're trying to find? For instance, since they're both regular hexagons, this angle must be equal to that angle. But that means that those two angles are corresponding. And since they're corresponding, that means that the lines here and here are in fact parallel. And the question you wanna ask now again is, why are they parallel? What is it they are trying to 
show us or have us consider about making them parallel? Hmm, well, maybe I could go right here and make a parallelogram. But looking at that parallelogram looking thing, I've got this region here, which is gonna be weird. It's a trapezoid most likely. So I could do it that way if I wanted, and we might even come back to that. But I'm also gonna kind of look around and think, how else could I approach it? I mean, if they're parallel, maybe I could just go across here. And gosh, that makes this little white triangle here look like an equilateral. I wonder if it is. Well, the thing is that the internal angle of any regular hexagon is 120. Now, there's multiple ways you can get that. It's n minus 2 times 180 over n, if you want it. But that's the long way. The short way is that the external angles of any polygon, including regular, sum up to 360. But for a regular, all of those are equal. And that's going to give you 60. So if I'm this angle here, then this angle right here where the dot is, is 60 degrees. And this angle where this dot is, is also 60 degrees. Well, then they're all 60 degrees. And that makes that an equilateral triangle as suspected. Okay, so you have suspicions, you form them. You say, gosh, it looks like this. I wonder if it is. And then you try to confirm it. Okay, great, because what that might do is allow us to go this way here and make a parallelogram. I'm going to call this A and B. And so the A is going to be the same as this, and the B is going to be the same as this. Hmm, okay. Uh, we would need to figure out how that would work. Um, oh, okay, so the A is going to be one, not too bad, but we got to think about how we're going to get that B. And you say, well, I mean, I, you can, you can guess, is it hitting the midpoint, right? But you don't want to guess here. You want something more solid than a guess. So if you look around at what else is around again, your vicinity, you might notice the three sevenths over here. And because it's a parallelogram with the property that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then this will also be three sevenths. And more importantly, that little piece right there will also be three sevenths. But since the whole side of our internal hexagons is one, the part over here must be four sevenths because they have to add up four sevenths plus three sevenths to make one. Therefore, this B value here transfers to the outside because they're both four sevenths also because of the equilateral triangle. So now I'm going to have one plus four sevenths plus one plus three sevenths. Well, four sevenths and three sevenths is seven sevenths. That's one. Another one and another one, that's three. In other words, my external hexagon has a side length of three. And we are now ready to solve. If you need to rewind to watch that part again, I'm going to kind of erase the screen so I can calculate now, okay? Again, the basic plan, I'll just write it here for now. It's six times S squared six times s squared root three over four. Well, why don't you have an s squared for this one? Because that side length was one and one squared is one. And we don't need it. So let's go ahead and uh, clear the screen. Okay, uh, pause the video to take notes of what you need. Otherwise, I'm gonna be clearing and we go here. We have six times three squared rad three over four minus six times six times rad three over four. This, the s squared was again equal to one squared. So it doesn't play any role. So you have some options now about how you want to proceed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take and keep, don't, don't do too much. Essentially, don't simplify it in the wrong way if you can avoid here. I'm going to take a six out right here and another six and a root three over four. So I'm going to have six root three over four factored out and inside I will have nine. That is this nine right here minus that six right there. Everything else got factored out. Nine minus six is three. Six over four is three over two. Then I'm gonna have three rad three over two times three. Answer nine rad three over two. And that is the answer to this question. Um, I hope that after the test is over, 
uh, for any times that you mock, that you do go ahead and attempt all questions when time permits for you to do so. Obviously, on the real test, they won't count, of course, but your practice will benefit from it. Uh, that's all for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one.